Well, the bushfires in Tasmania, South Australia and Victoria have been fanned by a heat wave affecting much of central and southern Australia. So what can we expect for the rest of the summer? Well, earlier I spoke to John Nairn, Acting Regional Director with the South Australia Bureau of Meteorology. And he says these hot conditions are likely to continue for at least the next couple of weeks. The problem that we're facing at the moment is uh, a, a lack of uh, moisture across the uh, interior of Australia. And whilst we uh, don't have the start of the monsoon to actually bring in that moisture, uh, we're going to have a continuing build-up of heat in the interior of Australia. And these wind changes that are coming through, the, the front that brought the relief to southern Australia last night, uh, is only a temporary relief because we've still got all that stored up heat on the interior and uh, it'll just come around again once the high moves back out uh, into the Tasman Sea. So you mentioned there a delay for the monsoon season. Do we have any expectation of how long it will be before that monsoon finally arrives? Uh, look, we do have uh, an understanding of how the monsoon is driven and uh, we monitor some... Um, uh, global waves that move around the equator and uh, it looks like it could take two to three weeks before that wave arrives again and that would be uh, the main driver for the monsoon coming in again. It isn't the only driver but uh, it does give us a sense of how long we might have to wait to see uh, uh, a, a beginning of uh, that moistening process in the interior of Australia. So with conditions set to continue, it's quite extraordinary to see so much of the continent being affected. How unusual is it to have a situation like this? Oh, look, it is fairly unusual. Uh, <clears throat> you have to have... Uh, uh, a miss, uh, you have to miss out on some winter rains uh, to actually get it so dry in the interior of Australia. And uh, certainly that's what happened this year. And... Uh, and it is a bit unusual when you think about it. We've had two rather wet summers with the La Nina, uh, but uh, certainly we have turned right out of that now and we're in a, a, a more normal, drier phase. But it did, it did come with a shutdown of winter rains through the interior of Australia. So it is drier than normal um, uh, in that sense. And so the mo soils are quite uh, dry through there. Um, <clears throat> so we are waiting for the monsoon to, to kick in, to actually bring in that moisture. Without the moisture, we don't have the evaporating uh, process to help cool, cool the air. And so we get much higher temperatures building up. And it is a very broad area that's being affected. And in terms of what it is that actually defines a heat wave, what are we talking about here? Because it's not just a typical period of uh, higher than average temperatures. There's actually a lot more going on there, isn't there? Look, there is, uh, certainly it's an area of research that I've been embarking on over the last few years and uh, there is an emerging understanding around the world about what is impactful during a heat wave and uh, one of the things that is rather nasty is uh, the overnight temperatures. If we can't get uh, the cooler nights, uh, we store too much heat in both ourselves and in our infrastructure around us and we carry that forward into the next day, into the next day of hot temperatures. And it, if that goes on too long, um, then you'll begin to see people who are vulnerable fail, as well as our infrastructure begin to be affected. So um, overnight temperatures, probably as important, if not more important, than the daytime temperatures to some degree. Um, and another element, of course, is uh, how well adjusted are we to the temperatures that we're seeing, if we've had a coolish spell and we go into a heat wave, we're more impacted. Um, fortunately, if you like, we've had a rather warm run up into summer. So that factor, if you will, is uh, a little less uh, of an issue at the moment. And John Nan, can you give us a, a bit of an outlook for the rest of summer and if possible uh, the year ahead as we move into 2013, what sort of weather conditions are expected? Well, certainly uh, the, uh, the climate outlook is one where we are in neutral conditions as far as El Nino is concerned, so we would expect to have reasonably average conditions. That that, uh, however, has to be tempered by such things as 
when the monsoon will onset. So I'd rather probably just talk about the summer we're having. And uh, the thing is, until we get those rains uh, and the monsoon, it's going to take two or three weeks before we get the next chance for it to start. If it misfires again, then the, the heat will continue. Uh, we do need to see uh, the monsoon kick in to actually give us some relief.